Hello YouTube, today we're going to be uh, covering how to get started with the new Daikon Forge GUI toolkit for Unity. Uh, this is a very powerful toolkit, in my opinion far more powerful than many of the competitors, and it's very easy to get started. First, we're going to prepare to create our UI by setting up uh, a layer for our UI to reside on. I'm going to call mine GUI. This is set so that the uh, main camera does not render this layer. The GUI camera will render it, so it appears as an overlay. Additionally, I'm going to create some input axes. The reason I'm doing this is because um, you might want to have keyboard navigable uh, UI, and you want to create a separate axis so that you don't have the WAS and D keys affecting it. You can also use this for uh, game consoles and such. You could set uh, the left thumbstick, for example, to navigate the UI. Just remember these names. Now we're actually going to create. Uh, we're actually going to create a UI. This is very easy. Just pop up the UI wizard. I already have the GUI layer selected. These two values relate to uh, what your UI is going to be used for. Orthographic, this is whether your UI is 2D or 3D. And pixel perfect uh, makes your UI respond to the current resolution. For example, at lower resolutions, the uh, your element, UI elements will scale larger so that they perfectly map to the screen pixels. You might turn this off if you had an in-game uh, display, like a, maybe a control panel. Um, you don't necessarily want that scaling to the screen resolution. You want it to stay where it is. This will also, this uh, input manager section determines how joysticks are used uh, to generate UI events. I'm going to leave this on um, because that, that this will remain, you know, compatibility between keyboard and joystick seamlessly. This click button will determine uh, which button on the joystick is used to uh, sort of generate mouse up and down events. This is used to, you know, you could use the perhaps the A button on an Xbox 360 controller to click, you know, bu the button that's selected. And then these horizontal and vertical axes are used to generate key events. You might have uh, your UI set up to respond to arrow keys to navigate between elements. So on PC you'd use the arrow keys, but on you know, uh, on a you know a console or with a controller, you can just use the left thumbstick to navigate them. Or even on a PC you could use the left thumbstick and the keyboard and the mouse. It all works perfectly together. Now we're going to uh, create the UI, and there it is. You notice these uh, red sections over here. We need to assign an atlas and a font to use. So we're going to go create the atlas now. Some some things to make sure. You want to disable non-power of two so that they don't get stretched if they're not exactly power of two textures. You want to make sure read write enabled is turned on. The texture packer needs to be able to read the textures. And additionally, you have to set the format to RGBA 32-bit. This also, this is required in order to make the texture readable. You'll also want a small, plain white texture somewhere in your atlas. This is going to be used by the text field to render the current text selection, as well as the caret. So I'm going to select all of my textures. This is very easy, just user interface, create texture atlas. Just pick where you're going to save this. And there's your atlas. You can see all of the textures we have uh, included in the atlas now. You can also, if you wanted to have a texture that was uh, that uses 9 slice scaling, you can select the texture next to edit, and go down here to border. You can preview what that's going to look like down here. I'm going to set my button 
to uh, 10 pixels on every side. And this button, if any UIs use this button texture, they will automatically refresh when you click this button so you can preview it live. I'm going to do this to each of my button images. If you wanted to, you could also, up here, select a texture 2D or drag it onto this slot and add textures after you, your atlas is already created. It'll repack it and it won't make any difference to you. All your textures will automatically be repacked as uh, efficiently as possible. So now we're going to assign our tech blue skin as the default atlas. Now we're going to need to assign a font to our uh, U UI. Daikon Forge GUI uses uh, the angel code format. There's a, there's uh, many programs that can export this. The two uh, most popular ones are BM font for Windows or Hyro, which is Java, so it should work on any uh, any computer, Mac or PC. And you want the you want to use the text format, not the XML format. You'll also have a texture generated. This also needs to be non-power of two read write enabled RGBA 32 bit. With this font texture and font definition, I'm just going to go to Daikon Forge user interface, create font definition. I'll save it here. It'll automatically use the name defined in the font texture, the in the, in the uh, font definition as the name. And there's our font. We're also going to need to add our font texture to the atlas. Just drag it here. Add. And finally, make sure our font knows it's part of that atlas and which texture it's using. And our font can now be connected to our UI. Now that your, our UI is set up, we can, um, we can create some basic controls. I'm going to start by creating a label. This is, of course, used to display simple text wherever you need it. Um, supports many different properties, as you can see. Uh, you can have it um, auto size if you need it. It will automatically resize to encompass any text you want to throw in there. You can also turn that off. You can have it auto height so the width stays the same, but the height resizes. You can also have it uh, word wrap, so it'll also it'll wrap words around this uh, width. Okay, change the text alignment, and then the coolest uh, feature here is the markup. Labels have an inline uh, styling markup that allows you to colorize parts of the label, as well as embed sprites. So, for example, I'm going to have uh, mark markup turned on. I'm going to have uh, red and green parts of a label. This is really simple, just color. And then hexadecimal notation. Two digits for red, two digits for green, and two digits for blue. Just wrap the text you want to be colorized. and we'll also embed a sprite here. You don't need a closing tag for this one, you just need the name of the sprite inside an open tag. There you go. You might use this uh, to embed, embed, embed perhaps key images in tutorial text.
issue of uh, I think Unity's not responding to you. Oh well. Um, now we're going to uh, create a button. This obviously is uh, used when you want to uh, have something you can click on. Uh, the built-in button lets you specify div different uh, sprites for each state of the button. If you wanted to uh, perhaps trigger uh, some animation on hover or something, maybe uh, you know, maybe it smoothly transitions to uh, a highlight color when you hover over it, or some other color when you click on it. You can also hook up uh, tweens fairly easily. But the built built-in button, uh, just you know, if you want to throw something up on the screen, it's very good for that. Just these up. And uh, just enter your text here. And uh, I'm going to change the text align to center. Oh, Unity. Apologize, Unity's uh, acting up on me. So, going to show you how to and show you how to create sprites as well. It's very simple. Just uh, right-click, hit Control. You see a wide variety of sprites here. We have basic sprites, just stretches to fill the rectangle. Radial sprite, you can have the you know you can have a uh, fill that originates from one of uh, nine points on the sprite. The most common would be center, of course. You might use this for uh, spell cooldowns, for example. Slice sprite uses uh, nine size scaling to uh, scale the sprite. Obviously, similar to what the button does. Texture uh, lets you specify a texture that isn't in the atlas. This will result in another draw call, um, but it lets you embed textures that weren't pre included in the atlas before. Uh, tiled, we'll take a texture and tile it across the rectangle. And web actually lets you specify a URL. It's a lot like texture, it'll specify a URL to go and fetch a texture from. If you've used NGUI, you might notice an uh, absence of a filled sprite, and that's because all sprites have that functionality. So you don't have to worry about uh, which ones support that and which ones don't. I'm just going to stick this right here, just to show you. There you have it. There's a, a simple UI created very easily, and it's very, very powerful. that you do want to make sure your main camera isn't rendering the GUI layer. Just something to keep in mind. You can also, uh, if you want to change whether it's 2D or 3D later on, change your, just change the render mode to perspective right here, and you can also change pixel perfect. So for example, I can rotate that, rotate that, And look, now it is uh, perspective. A lot of modern UIs seem to do this. I uh, thank you for watching. I I hope I've gotten you excited about Daikon Forge GUI. More tutorials will be coming soon.